friends welcome back to my channel i hope you all are doing good and learning about stock market with me so today is the third day and today we are going to be learning about a very important topic that is ipo what is ipo ipo is initial public offering why ipo is important ipo is important because only after going into ipo a company can be listed on the stock exchange so in today's lesson i am including two uh, parts like uh, what is an ipo and then then comes how to transact after a company does their ipo that means how to buy and sell so without wasting any more time let's get into the video and remember if you are new to my channel please please subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up because that will be a great motivation thank you so much keep watching hello friends in the third lesson we will learn about the ipo market that is initial public offering market i hope you have got a clear idea of market ecosystem let's learn more about these markets stocks and the processes of transacting in listed shares the bse bombay stock exchange have more than 5000 companies listed in it and the national stock exchange have more than 1600 companies listed when a company is going public it means that it is offering its shares to public in exchange of funds for example take a company abc it has a total of 1000 shares it is planning to give 150 shares to the public you as an investor buys 5 shares the price is decided priorly by the company at 474 rupees per share so you pay a total amount of 2370 rupees to acquire these shares the question now is why do they list in stock exchanges well there are five methods for a company to raise funds first one is to borrow from a bank second borrow from domestic institutions third borrow from overseas fourth through private transactions and the fifth is by listing their shares by filing an ipo so why ipo that is our question the answer is mostly for capex funds capex is short for capital expenditure that is to scale up their business and build more manufacturing plants etc for example take wonderla they listed their shares before opening plants in hyderabad and chennai other reasons why a company will go public is to repay their debts for example aster dm healthcare group they had almost 1600 crores in debts they went public to raise funds to repay this other reason are to provide an exit to early investors early investors can be partners of company or angel investors venture capitalist and other private equity investors one other reason is that to increase their visibility in the market this in turn improves their growth and sales now let's check the sequence of events for a company to go public sebi has some norms on how to go public the first one is to appoint a merchant banker in case of a large public issue multiple merchant bankers are allowed the second step is to provide sebi with the registration statement a registration statement will have a company's background and its reason to go public the third step is sebi reviews this statement and takes a final call for the worthiness of its initial public offering sebi can also request for more info if it is required the fourth step is company puts out a draft red herring prospectus drhp which is a public document what is a drhp what does it contain we will see a drhp will have the size of initial public offering the number of shares offered to the public reason for initial public offering and also the utilization plan for the fund and it shows a complete financial statement of the company it will also have business description 
including the revenue model, expenditure details of the company, etc. The management's view on the business prospects, the risks involved in running the business are also included. DHRP is the most important document while you look for a company's IPO details. So what happens after IPO? IPO promotion. IPO promotion is done through TV ads and print adverts to build awareness among the public. The price man, the estimated price man between which the company go or like to go public is found out. Book building. The company officially opens a window during which the public can subscribe for shares. For example, a price band between 100 and 120 is decided. Then the public can choose a price they think is fair for the company to go public. Collecting all these price points with respective quantities is called as book building. Next is closure. After book building process, a price is decided for IPO. The window is closed. A price point is priced with maximum number of bids for it. Then comes the listing day. The day when company goes public is called as the listing day. So those are the steps for a company to go public. Still many questions remains. We will find out terms like oversubscribed and undersubscribed. Suppose a company's 1000 shares are available for the public but they receive bids for 2000 shares then it is oversubscribed. If only 900 bits are received, then it is undersubscribed. What happens soon after listing, the price falls? Don't worry, the underwriters, that means the company, have a special feature in which they can buy back up to additional 50% of the shares at the offer price. This feature is known as green shoe option. This is a 30 day stabilization period immediately after listing to intervene in market to stabilize share prices. So no need to worry about a fall in price soon after listing. Since the buyback is done at market price, the price is stabilized. Lesson 4 After IPO, how buying and selling actually works. After a company goes public, it is liable to disclose all its information related to the company to the public. The shares are traded on a daily basis. When positive announcements are made, market participants tends to buy the stock at any given price, which in turn pushes price further up. And the opposite happens too, if a, a negative announcement comes, the price will fall. The market participants reaction to news and events are translated to price movements. If there are no news, price moves depending upon the demand and the supply situation. What are the processes that are done in the background to buy your stock? Stock markets have very special computers and highly integrated system. You log into your trading account which is provided by your stock broker and you place a buy order. Your order ticket gets placed. Your order ticket will have information such as the details of your trading account, the price at which you want to buy the share of the company, the number of shares you wish to buy, etc. Before broker submits this order ticket, the exchange makes sure you have sufficient money in your account to buy these shares. If yes, this order ticket hits the exchange. Suppose you want to buy 200 shares of a company at 500 rupees per share. The algorithm of stock exchange finds either one person selling 200 shares altogether or it can be two people selling 1 and 199 shares respectively. This permutation and combination does not really matter. Once trade is executed, your shares get electronically credited to your DMAT account and similarly detected from seller's account. It takes 2 days for shares to get to your demand account. This is known as T plus 2 settlement. You can hold shares in your demand account as long as you wish 
it can vary from minutes to years this time period is known as holding period now let's find out how to measure your profits absolute return the return that your trade or investment has generated in absolute terms the formula to find absolute return is the ending price divided by the starting price minus 1 the whole into 100 see the example given below now let's find out how to calculate returns on holdings for more than a year common annual growth rate is what we calculate in these situations for example you buy a share at rupees 3030 hold it for 2 years and sell it at 3550 the formula to find CAGR is final value divided by the beginning value whole raised to 1 by n number of years minus 1 in this case CAGR is 8.2 percentage that means 8.2 percentage growth year on year for 2 years it is always best to express returns on an annualized basis so guys that's it for today i hope you understood something about ipo uh, and how to calculate the profit and how to buy and sell after company goes into their ipo so uh, in the coming lessons we will learn about the index that is nifty and sensex so keep watching uh, please support with your likes and shares thank you so much